everyone, it's Anne. I'm back for another floss tube update. Today is Tuesday, January 13th. Um, hope everybody's doing great. If you're a new viewer, welcome. Thank you for checking in and seeing what my channel's about. Um, mostly about stitching, hence the floss tubeness. Uh, if you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for joining me again. It's always great to have you back and spend a little time with you. So today's going to be a fairly short video, but I've got craziness happening for the rest of the month. And I thought if I didn't get a mid month video done today, it wasn't going to happen. Uh, if you follow me in other social media, you know that I'll be vending at Stitches West and I just got this morning, dragged all the boxes out into my driveway for UPS to pick up to ship to the show. Now, uh, I'll be leaving. My body will be going to California next week, um, but the product has to go ahead of me. So 350 pounds of yarn and patterns and I am whooped. <laughs> I'm going to try to kind of take it easy the rest of the week. I think I might be fighting off the nasty bug that's been going around and um, I'll really try and not to have that and then go travel and have more tiredness. So anyway, um, kind of regrouping. Thought I would check in this afternoon since I'm taking this afternoon off. Um, talk about some stitching. Let's do it. First up, I have a finish. Uh, this is the second of my personal year of whips. This is the Every Heart pin cushion. It came as a kit from Shepherd's Bush. Um, so the 32 count natural linen was included. All of the floss was included and it's a mix of DMC Weeks Dye Works Two other silks, I can't remember. Um, the little buttons came with it. Pattern came with it, obviously. The um, silk ribbon and the little seed pearls also came with it. Um, the only thing that did not was the backing, but I thought this was perfect. I had a little four by four square, <clears throat> four by four square of a Moda uh, reproduction type fabric like Civil War I think it's from their Civil War collection they've got a couple of those Kansas City Troubles maybe I don't know I don't follow quilting fabrics very closely but I liked all the antique versions in this packet so I have it um, I think this is adorable I think this is absolutely adorable so let me tell you the things that I liked and did not like about this um, the chart is hand drawn. Didn't love it because it was a little bit mm, stream of consciousness information. <laughs> there was not the same uh, specificity, specificness that you find with a lot of like, let's say little house patterns and that kind of thing. Like, okay, for instance, this motif is a pomegranate. They just have the exterior of this flower or of the pomegranate outlined in the color you're supposed to use my eye had a really hard time remembering then that I was supposed to like fill it in and the same is true for this flower it just had the outside uh, sort of outline and then you had to remember to fill in the stitches my my brain apparently does not like that sort of thing um, some of the stitches then were a little bit hard to read if they had back stitching over them. Um, and I love the concept of the finish of this. I love this ruched ribbon and the little seed pearls on it. There were no instructions whatsoever about how to finish this. None at all. They just sent you some of the finishing supplies but then didn't give you any information on how to finish it so those are the things i didn't like about that the things i did like about it is i love the detail in this i love all the little the little one over one hearts um 
It's very hard to see, but there's like a specialty type stitch in the center of the pomegranates. Um, I love the font that they picked for the words. I think that that's, I think it's adorable. And I don't have anything that's like super patriotic or 4th of July themed. Um, I actually have very little sort of summer themed pieces. So this one is definitely going to go out on my um, little table out in the, the living room when July comes because again, I think it's totally adorable. Um, yeah, another finish uh, for my personal year of whips challenge and really happy to have this one banged out. I think it's super cute. Also Olympic y. That's what I was going to mention. I haven't been doing any of the Olympics challenges, but we'll pretend that this is, you know, it's patriotic. Got the flag, got the red, white, and blue. It's happening. So that is done. So once I finished that, I went um, back to work on a full coverage project. I am working on a stitching shelf for February. Uh, the pumps this month in the full coverage fanatics group are pink and or flowers, which I think that definitely qualifies. And that is the part that I'm working on right now. And I am really happy to say that I busted out a page finish on this one. Now, caveat, this was my uh, gateway drug. I had not worked on a full coverage piece before this one. I saw this artwork. I loved it. I love the aesthetic. I love the different vignettes. I love how it's seasonal. I just loved it. So I purchased this pattern. This was the very first heaven and earth design or full coverage pattern I had ever purchased. And I thought I was going to just use the print version. Uh, that got old like really fast and I moved on to the tablet. But because I originally thought I was going to print all the pages, I actually have the large format of this, which doesn't mean anything in terms of how it's actually stitched. Um, it's exactly the same as the regular format. It's not the max color and it's not the supersized. It's the normal layout. It's just the pages are broken up differently. So they're not as full. There's not as many stitches in one of these pages as there are in the regular size. The, um, the expanded version that I have is I think 80 by 60, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, yeah, 80 by 60 as opposed to, I think it's 90 by 70. So it's a little bit, the symbols on the page, if you were to print it out, are a little bit bigger but it doesn't make any difference on, ta on a tablet. So I will claim this as a stitch from stash page finish, but I will calculate out the difference in the cost. I won't, um, I won't do it as if it were a regular size full page. So anyway, here it is in all its glory. I love this piece. I love this piece so much. I love the the colors I love the detail I, I just I love it it's massive you can see how far I have to go uh, just for the first column here or the first row but I am officially done a page so I think there's 94 pages of this chart in how in how it's laid out. So I only have 93 to go. Um, yeah, I'm going to just bust those out maybe tonight. Um, but through the weekend, right? I mean, 93 more pages, not a big deal. Okay. But that's making me happy because one of my year of whips personal challenge goals was to do, to complete a page on every one of my full coverage projects. And so that will bring us to some plans. Let me get my big book out. Oh, not my big book, the book. Um, so coming up for the rest of this month, I am going to be working on my Chatelaine 
Uh, the Desert Mandala, I will work on that. That'll go on my stand and I'll work on that tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That'll give me five days on that. Um, and then, uh, because I, sorry, trying to get that stuff from behind me on the chair. Um, because I finished two of my um, Year of Whips projects that I am attempting to check off, I have decided to allow myself a new start. It's going to be another small one. Um, I do have, I've said this before, but I've got two planned full coverage starts during the course of 2018. Those will be happening later in the year. Um, but I'm not going to let myself start anything new unless I finish two of the other pieces. Um, I don't in any stretch of the imagination think that I'm going to finish a full coverage project this year completely. Um, but I will talk about that in plans in a minute because while I'm going to stick with my five day rotation for the most part on projects, um, going to be switching up a little bit how I rotate projects in. So let's talk next about this. This is the Drawn Threads Simply Autumn. It's from their Simple Samplers collection. I've had this in stash. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I asked for some help picking what my next project was going to be, and this was the winner. So I'm going to do this a little differently. Um, keep this thought in your head, and then look at what's on the back. So this is this without the letters, and it's just a little square then. Okay. That's what I'm going to do with this one. I've decided I don't want the, um, the sampler, the alphabet included in it. I like it as just a little piece, like a little ornament. I had um, a piece of 32 count dirty linen, Belfast, in my stash. Um, and that is the called for fabric. I am going to swap out, <clears throat> let's see, it calls for gentle arts floss in six colors. So I'm going to, um, place out the gentle arts and use color and cotton. So let me show you what I've picked. Um, some of these are on bobbins cause I've used little bits for other projects, but It'll be lamb's wool, pumpkin, mahogany, chalkboard, golden mum, and maritime. So, I'm not sure I can hold all these, but I'm gonna try. So those will be the placed out colors that I'm going to use. So my thought was since there's not very many colors in this and it's a fairly small piece um, that I'll probably take that as a travel project and work on that for the five days that I'm on travel. Um, that seemed to be very straightforward. It's not going to be a huge piece, but I should be able to at least put some stitches in in the evenings. Well, I put my feet up after working all day on the conference floor and that'll be a nice relaxing kind of treat to myself. So that is the plan for that. Uh, so that should get me through the 26th, I think it is. And then any leftover time, I'll have like a couple of days at the end of the month, I will slot something in. We'll see how far I get on my Chatelaine. If I'm kind of close to being finished, I may put another couple days in on that. Uh, if not, I'll, you know, pull something else up. It's not like I don't have other projects to work on, so that'll be fine. Um, okay, so where does that leave us? Um, let me talk really quickly about a acquisition and then I will move on to plans. This is the 
February Color and Cotton Fabric of the Month. It is a 32 count Lugana in the colorway Cosmic Candy. And it is this gorgeous kind of purpley pink with blue, uh, blue purple marbling on it. So pretty. Mm, that's probably about, that's pretty close. Um, so when I posted this on Instagram, I also suggested because I have the four seasonal spring fairies by Joan Elliott to do at some point. Um, and I was thinking this fabric might be a really, really good match for spring fairy. Love those toadstools. Uh, so this is not going to be a new start like right away, but I'm kind of kidding up fabric and figuring out, you know, what I want to do. So let me know what you think. Um, seemed like lots of folks on Instagram thought that was a good idea, but there it is together just in case you were unfamiliar with the pattern. Um, and I already have fabric picked out for the Fall Fairy, and I can't remember whether it was summer or whether it was winter. Oh, I know what it was. It was Time Traveler. Um, that's another Joan Elliott one that I want to do. That's the little steampunk gal, and so I have fabric for that. So I still have Summer Fairy and Winter Fairy that I'm undecided on fabrics, but pretty sure this is a go unless anyone is like, oh, you're going to hate it on that fabric. But I'll use that with that. So that was a nice addition to the stash. So another winner from Angela. I love all of my Fabric of the Month clubs from her. Um, plans. Let's talk about plans. Okay, so you guys know pretty much what I'm working on for the rest of the month of February. Uh, Desert Garden uh, Mandala is up next. Work on that for five days. Then I will start the Drawn Thread Simply Autumn that you just saw. And then I'll fill in a couple of days at the end of the month just to kind of round me out. Um, so I was talking with Sarah over at Stitch and Mommy. I'm sure you guys already watch her, but um, she's been doing, she and I, have been tackling our rotations somewhat similarly this year. Uh, five days devoted to a project. Um, so we kind of get, I'm finding, and I think she's finding that five days works out pretty well. It gives you enough time to actually kind of get back in the rhythm of something and make some progress. If you have one day that's maybe not as productive as you'd like, you can roll over and maybe add on a, a little extra stitching, you know, an extra half hour or whatever. And so you, you feel like you're actually seeing progress. For me, there's no way I could rotate to a different project every day. I looked at doing some of the challenges and I really like the concept of the Olympics challenge. Um, but I basically would have to do it the way I do my rotation where I would work five days on a project and make it fit the theme. Um, there's no way that I could rotate to a different project every day. I didn't really care for that. And I have done a few of the shorter challenges in the past and that's just not how I work. So um, I think, you know, everybody's wired differently and you just have to pick what works best for how you like to do things. And there's nothing wrong and nothing right about it. It's just, what works for your style. So um, Sarah had said that she thought she was gonna be switching up her rotation a little bit and I will refer you over to her end of the month um, podcast at the end of February because I know she'll be talking about it then. But in essence, um, it's rotating through some things a little differently. I had initially thought that I would just you know, try to bang through all of my small projects at the front of the year. And I've come to realize that one of the things that I've been really liking about my rotation is the balance between working on a massive full project or full coverage project and then knowing that I have something smaller to work on and not, uh, not just working on full coverage 
for those super, super large projects. And so I thought, you know, if I got, if I got through all of my small projects, the end of the year is going to seem really tedious. And so when she tossed out some ideas that she was having about changing up her rotation, I thought, me too. That's what I'm going to do. So <clears throat> I'm going to still work on my Chatelaine for one five-day slot every month. That's not going to change because that is a project that I know is going to take a long time and I do want to see some progress on it. I'm also going to continue to work on a full coverage project for at least one five-day slot every month. And what I'll do is I will pick one of the full coverage fanatics um, sales. It'll probably be the monthly theme um, just because I will, I know I'll be able to rotate some other stuff through on that. So that's going to take up 10 days of the remaining um, of the 30 days in any given month. Let's pretend they all have 30 because that's an easier number. So that leaves me with 20 days or four five day rotations. And so from that, I have a list in my little notebook. This won't really mean much to y'all because it's totally scribbled over, but I know what it is talking about. That has all of my whips on it. And I currently, before I start the Simply Autumn, um, will have, I currently have 16 active whips. I know that doesn't seem like very much to some folks, but it seems a lot to me, especially because half of them are really large or and or full coverage projects. So what I'm going to do is um, once I start the Simply Autumn, I'll have 17 active whips. Aside from my Chatelaine and aside from the full coverage piece that I'm going to pick that slots into whatever that particular month's um, stitch along in the full coverage fanatics group is, I'm just going to use a random number generator for those remaining 15 projects. I'm going to let it pick me a project to work on for each of those other four rotations. It might be a huge project. It might be a small project. Um, I'm going to let the, the power of the universe <laughs> decide what it is I should be working on. And I figure with the randomness of that, there are maybe some months where I just work on big projects and I won't have anything finished. I might get a page finish on a full coverage piece, but I'm not going to be finishing, finishing uh, all my small pieces at the front end. I think it'll also give me um, a mix. Right now I've got, let's see if I can find the master breakdown here. Um, so right now I have four, uh, I will have five, what I consider small projects. Um, so things that basically are this much work, they probably would be about a week maybe maybe 10 days for some of them. Um, so I'll have five of those. I'll have three things that I consider a medium-sized project, which are things that would take me more like 10 days, maybe, um, ish, maybe a little bit longer, but 10 days. Um, and then everything else I've got are large projects. So my plan is to just rotate through those, get done what I can get done in my five days, enjoy the ride, enjoy the stitching, embrace my inner Zen stitcher, um, and just have, uh, as another podcaster said earlier in the year, a crap ton of fun. <laughs> so as I finish stuff, um, if I finish two projects again, I'll let myself start something new with the goal to trying to get down to about 12 projects at the end of the year. So wish me luck on that. We'll see how that goes. And of course, I will keep you up to date. I'll check back in at the end of the month, at the end of February. Until then, I hope you guys are having a great time with this second month of 2018, getting lots of stitching done, maybe enjoying the Olympics if you've been watching that. And I will catch up with you guys um, again at the end of February. So take care. Happy stitching.